Hello, welcome back for another block of the day today on blocktalks.com, I'm Brandon Winchester, and today I'll be doing a right-sided tap block, transversus abdominis plane block, uh, for a right inguinal hernia surgery. Uh, we're going to demonstrate uh, a couple of things uh, on this video. We're going to demonstrate uh, some of the ident identifying anatomy. Uh, we're going to demonstrate the external, internal oblique muscles as well as the transversus abdominis muscle uh, and the tap plane uh, in between internal oblique and transversus abdominis. Uh, we'll show you how to identify the, the target, but then also to hydrodissect your local anesthesia from the place at which you puncture uh, the tap plane uh, along towards the posterior. Uh, it seems to me, from as it's been explained to me and as anecdote has, has proven, uh, that with this particular block, this posterior tap block approach, uh, that the more posterior the better, uh, within reason. I think it's still important to be able to visualize that tap plane uh, to try to keep your local anesthetic in that tap plane as posterior uh, as you can get it. And I think starting in the tap plane and dissecting, hydrodissecting posteriorly uh, is one way to accomplish that. Uh, we'll be using a total volume of 30 cc's of quarter percent bupivacaine. Uh, we're also mixing in uh, epinephrine uh, as well as preservative-free decadron for prolongation uh, of the analgesic effect. Uh, five milligrams of preservative-free decadron. Uh, and we'll be using a BK Medical Flex Focus 400 uh, for this demonstration video. So you can see the starting position uh, of my ultrasound probe is somewhat oblique relative to the overall patient's body. Um, in terms of craniocaudal axis, uh, we're between the rib cage cranially uh, and the iliac crest uh, caudally. Uh, in, that, in that space in the flank uh, between the two. In this particular gentleman, there's not a whole lot of space between his rib cage and his, uh, his iliac crest. Uh, you can see the umbilicus here, uh, which is about the T10 dermatoma level. Uh, for the ilioinguinal iliohepagastric uh, nerve block component that we're trying to target indirectly by way of this tab block, uh, we're looking at about a T12 to L1 uh, dermatomal innervation. Uh, those are the primary low dermatomes that matter uh, in terms of surgical anesthesia for a uh, inguinal hernia repair. Uh, it is important to note also that, that a tap block uh, gets exclusively somatic uh, analgesia, uh, that there is some visceral component for inguinal hernia surgery. Uh, so you can't always expect complete surgical anesthesia and complete pain relief necessarily, uh, exclusively doing a somatic block uh, like a tap block. There will sometimes be uh, some breakthrough discomfort, which is typically attributed uh, to that visceral component of this particular surgery. So you can see as I slide up and down the craniocaudal axis towards ribcage cranially and towards iliac crest caudally, primarily what I'm doing on the ultrasound screen is just trying to achieve a tilt angle that gives me the best reflection uh, of that tap plane. So we'll go ahead and start pointing out some of the anatomy here. So as I slide my probe towards the anterior, the right is anterior towards the belly button, the left is posterior, all I'm doing is trying to achieve the best bright white view of the planes between muscles. And I think this is a pretty good view, what I call the triple pencil eraser sign uh, of the external oblique, most superficially, the internal oblique muscle right there in the middle, and the transversus abdominis muscle, the deepest of the three. And that bright white horizontal line just between internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscle represents the tap plane. Now within that tap plane, or some say uh, deep to that tap plane, uh, are the spinal segmental nerves uh, which innervate the entire abdominal wall uh, and all the way down into the uh, inguinal region. Uh, and uh, although a t posterior tap block, which is what we're going to do, gets you pretty good analgesia uh, from about T10 all the way down to T12L1, uh, we're really aiming to try to get the caudal most uh, components of that. So some might argue to just slide your probe uh, caudally uh, towards the iliac crest to try to get a little bit more of a, of a caudad uh, location for your local anesthetic injection. So what we're doing now is finding that tap plane and just sliding our probe as posterior as we can and visualizing that tap plane as far posterior as we can visualize it, which is about here in that posterior location there. Right on that line there, yeah, and just follow up posterior. And that's about going to be our target to insert. We'll insert a little bit more to the right there, and we'll hydrodissect once we start injecting and flatten our needle angle and advance it more towards the posterior direction. So you can see my probe kind of dug into the, to the skin there. I'm going to prep widely with chlorhexidine. Sometimes the loose either obese, loose tissue, or in this case, elderly, uh, loose skin 
can be a little bit of a, a little bit imposing. Uh, at times, it actually makes sense to just apply some traction. So I'm actually going to have Noel reach across and just apply a little bit of skin traction to flatten out the surface uh, on which I'm going to insert my needle. I'm going to feel a bee sting here, sir. Yeah, big pinch, big bee sting. Just sit nice and still. Our total depth of our ultrasound transducer right now is about three centimeters in depth, so it is fairly superficial. Okay, so you can see from the over-the-shoulder view here, the probe kind of buried into the skin, and well, you can see is, is providing some traction on the skin to flatten out the insertion surface. And this is a 20-gauge ultraplex needle, 10-centimeter ultraplex needle. Okay, just go ahead and hold that same traction position there that we're inserting in plane from anterior to posterior. Okay, you can see your needle coming in from the right side of the screen in plane to the left side of the screen. We've already gotten through that first pop between external oblique and internal oblique. And that next pop that we feel, the next step we, pip we feel is going to be into that transversus abdominis plane. pull back and go a little bit steeper. See if I can get a little bit closer to a perpendicular angle versus that plane, in, at least in the, on initial puncture. Okay, I felt a little bit of a pop and a give as I got through the tap plane. We'll go ahead and aspirate and give five cc's there. We're just going to look for that plane to obliterate. Before you inject, let's go ahead and just visualize that plane. We'll go ahead and look for that plane to open up as we inject. Five cc's there, please. You can see that plane is opening up fairly nicely there. If I scan below the injection, you can see the plane's intact. Scan up to injection, you can see the plane is tenting upwards. See the tenting upwards of that plane. It's one of the endpoints you're looking for, either that or kind of a fish mouthing appearance of that injectate. Okay, we'll go another five cc's and I'll slowly start advancing my needle. Okay. Another five cc's, please. How many is that total? It's 15. All right, we'll go ahead and get five more. I'm just going to go ahead and complete my injection at 20. I had 30 available to us. It's 20. Okay. I'm going to pull my needle out. Now the post-injection view, the post-confirmational view that you that you can sometimes do, since this is kind of the post-injection view there, that's where we injected. You can see how obliterated that tap plane is. So that's often how it looks. You often don't get this classic hydrodissection pattern as you inject. And so if you're ever in doubt about whether or not you successfully injected into that tap plane, you can scan cranially until that tap plane is intact and then back slowly caudally until you see that tap plane kind of obliterate there. So point of obliteration of the tap plane and slide either cranially or caudally, whichever is, uh, is available, whatever space is available to you until the plane becomes intact there, and then back to the injection location where the plane looks more like a fish mouth. So we'll go ahead and take a picture there. You can see 
all of this local anesthesia in that location that when you scanned up more cranially was just an intact tap plane. So that's a reasonable endpoint to look for, is just an obliteration of the screen and or kind of a fish mouth appearance in that tap plane post injection. So that concludes our right-sided transversus abdominis plane tap block uh, that we did uh, primarily for uh, post-operative pain control uh, of the ilioinguinal iliohepagastric uh, distribution uh, for a inguinal hernia repair. Uh, right-sided tap block, kind of a posterior approach, modified posterior approach. Uh, and we pointed out a couple of things, we, we mainly that we, that we demonstrated the, the anatomy of the external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominis, as well as the tap plane, uh, and how to get your needle tip into that tap plane, uh, but also demonstrated sort of a flattening and an advancing of the needle, a hydrodissection technique, in order to enhance the spread more posteriorly during this block. Uh, we had 30 cc's available for, uh, to us of quarter percent bupivacaine with epinephrine and preservative-free decadron. Um, because of the, the, the space limitation, he's very skinny, um, and because of how well the spread appeared to be, uh, to be going, uh, I only utilized 20 cc's of that. Um, it is possible to target specifically the ilioinguinal and iliopagastric nerves visually uh, in some patients, but uh, ultimately know that if you use this posterior approach uh, and you stay as posterior as you, can, as you can go and still visualize that tap plane, uh, that whether you see the nerves, ilioinguinal and iliopagastric nerves or not, uh, you'll still indirectly get those nerves and still should provide good, at least uh, somatic, uh, analgesia for inguinal hernia repairs. Uh, again, along those lines, um, somatic versus visceral, uh, it is expected that there will be some visceral component of pain from an inguinal hernia repair, so you don't always get complete analgesia uh, with a tap block uh, and or inguinal, uh, ilioinguinal, iliohepagastric blocks uh, for inguinal hernia repair. So hope this block was helpful. Stay tuned for more blocks of the day on blockjocks.com.